Thank you. Good morning. I'm Aaron Feigenbaum. I lead security for Google Apps. I have to tell you, I came in from California and I'm a little bit jet lagged, so I did not get a chance to work out this morning. Do you mind doing a quick exercise with me? Is that okay? Yeah? Everybody hold out your hands. Hold them out. Hold them out. Wiggle your fingers. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I told you they would do this. This is kind of funny. Turn your hands inside out. Right hand over left. And interlock your fingers. Interlock your fingers. Interlock your fingers. And thumbs pointing down. Yep. Make sure your thumbs are pointing down. Yep. And then straight up. <laughs> so if you understand that, then everything we're going to talk about security is going to be really easy. Security has changed a lot in the past couple years. I've been in the security field for about 22 years, and when I started, it was something that was discussed in the back rooms. It was discussed with engineers in data centers. Security has now become critical to businesses worldwide. It's something that's discussed in boardrooms. It's something that's discussed with investors. It's something that can actually make or break a business. And times have also changed in terms of what our users want. Our users are looking for more ways to be innovative, more ways to collaborate. And with things like consumerization of IT, users now see tools better than they've ever had before. They now have things at home that are much better than what they have at work. Right? At home, they can find the menu for a restaurant that's 5,000 miles away. Yet they struggle at work still to find the results of what happened last quarter. So users are bringing these tools. Well, I contend that cloud computing is actually the perfect intersection of giving the users the, control, the ability to innovate, the ability to collaborate, while still giving IT the ability to have the control and security that they need to understand what's happening within their environment. I actually contend that cloud computing can be as secure, if not more secure, than what most organizations are doing. I believe that the Google Cloud is probably one of the most secure places people can put their data. And you heard Diane mention 600 security engineers. That start to give you an understanding about the economies of scale that we're dealing with. And I don't know too many other organizations that can have this type of economy. So if you think about it, where is your money safer? Underneath your mattress, where you can look at it all the time and you can see you put it there? Or in the bank? The bank, you may not be able to see it, but it has the armed guards, the video surveillance, the big alarms, right? So they have the economies of scale. The same is true with Google, right? We have not only 600 security engineers, but some of the world's leading experts, people that have come up with innovative research about drive-by downloads, about web hijacking. They actually look for vulnerabilities in other people's software. We call that Project Zero, and we tell other vendors about that. I can spend hours talking about the technology that powers security behind Google, but we don't have that time this morning. So I want to focus on three major topics. You've heard a couple times today and yesterday, born in the cloud. Born in the cloud also has some tremendous security benefits that others cannot replicate when they try to make their old legacy technology cloud ready. Transparency and control. We understand that you are potentially giving Google one of your most valuable assets which is your data. And even though you're giving Google that data, you are still responsible for it should something bad happen. Right? So we work very hard every day to earn that trust and to make sure we're being good custodians of that data. And then built for the user. It's been one of Google's mantras from day one. Focus on the user and the rest will come. And that's also true about security. So let's talk a little bit more about each one of these. By a show of hands, who's a Gmail user? Raise your hand. Hmm? Okay, thank you. By a show of hands, who's not a Gmail user? Raise your hand. Yeah? Leave. Okay. 
The reason I ask is because Gmail is a great example of some of the reliability and security that we put in place. So for example, something doesn't happen in Gmail until it's replicated six times. So we actually have six copies of each piece of email that you send in Gmail. Now this is not just a backup, but this is live replication. Because we all know IT systems fail. But with Gmail, I have a copy on another server in another data center. So I fully expect a server to fail. I fully expect a rack of servers to fail or even an entire data center while still being able to serve the user and the user never even knowing there's an issue. We also, as you can see, have a massive network of data centers with lots of servers. But all of our servers look identical. This gives us a tremendous security advantage because they're all the same. We can patch and upgrade them all in a unified, consistent manner. Right? So even like today, Microsoft issue security patches. And according to Microsoft, it takes companies between 30 to 60 days to deploy a server patch after they've released it. That's a scary number. That's 30 to 60 days that a security vulnerability exists in your system that a hacker can use to break in. But because of our architecture of being uniformity, we can patch and upgrade that in a faster manner. We're also unique in what allows us to patch and upgrade is that we design security from the beginning. We actually control the entire stack. We're one of the few manufacturers out there that actually makes their own server. People don't think about that, but Google is actually one of the world's largest server manufacturers. And when you design your own servers, you can actually put security in from the get-go. So for example, like our machines don't have things like video ports or video cards because we don't need that. So that allows us to remove those type of services. That's actually called what we call in the traditional security business server hardening, but we get to do it really at the hardware level. We actually design our own motherboards. We write our own chips. So this allows us to really react and move faster. Now, transparency and control. Like I said, we understand that you're giving us one of your most valuable assets, and you deserve to know how it's being used, how it's being secured. So this comes into two different categories. It comes in both what Google is doing to be good stewards of that. And while I would love to give everybody the chance to come and audit Google, obviously with the millions of customers that we have, that's not realistic. Right? So we've brought in some of the world's top third-party independent auditors to come and review our systems. Make sure that we're doing everything that we need to to maintain the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your data. And they look at these systems every year and produce a report. And we share these reports with our customers. When I started at Google almost nine years ago, I went through our first audit and it was about 60 pages. So we went into 60 pages of details. This last audit is now 350 pages of incredible details of what we're doing to secure our customer data. And we encourage our customers to take a look at these reports. We are also one of the first cloud providers to meet some of the world international security standards. Some of the new standards that came specifically for the cloud, such as ISO 27017 and 27018. Now, transparency about what we're doing is only one aspect. The other aspect is transparency about what your customers are doing within the system, right? And even for that, even though you don't have access to the server itself, we want to make sure that you have the ability to see what your users are doing. And we've enabled tools such as Google Vault that allows to see what your users have sent in their email, search their email, and export those results. Things like Google Drive audit reporting that allows you to see what users have shared, when they've accessed it, who they've shared it with, what they've downloaded, what they've printed. So again, to give you that type of insight. And in security, we also say prevention is the best medicine. And that's where data loss prevention comes in. So if you can avoid that confidential information, even leaving your environment, as we heard about, um, 
that's a benefit from a security perspective. And I want to show you a quick demo about how DLP works in practice. And to that, I would like to bring to the stage one of our technical experts, Yoshiki Sun. Uh, if you'd come and join us uh, and see some of this. How making security smart that just works is essential to having a good security strategy. Another one of these great examples is spam. Many of our users think that spam is already a solved problem, but it's really not. There's a lot more spam in the email than there is actual email, and it's growing between 5 to 10% a year. But our Gmail users, those that raise their hand, less than 0.1% of your inbox is actually spam. And that's we're able to do that because of our machine learning and artificial intelligence. We're able to filter out that type of spam. When I was a chief security officer before joining Google, I had a saying, make it easy for users to do the right thing, and they tend to. Right? Most users are not malicious. They just want to get their work done, all of us. But if we require a couple extra clicks, they'll avoid those steps. They'll just send that email, right, without taking the extra steps. And that's why it's very important that security be natural to use. And here are some other examples of where we've actually integrated into the system without users having to take other, other actions. So sending everything between the user and Google as encrypted. We were one of the first providers to encrypt the entire transmission, not just the authentication. Storing information in an encrypted manner. So all of your information that you keep in Google Apps is now encrypted at rest without users having to do anything. And the only people that have access to it are the people that have access to the encryption keys. And then last but not least, and if you only take one thing away from my talk today, it's this next point. It's around security keys, right? So we use them at Google. You saw a picture of them. And we're actually going to, uh, for all Google Apps customers, make a special for that. And that we'll talk about that in a blog post after this event. But you're asking what these are probably. So as human beings, it seems like part of our core DNA, we can only remember one password. It's ingrained in us. The password for our Netflix is the same password for our Facebook, is the same password for our Google account, which is the same password for our bank account. And we also share that password with our daughter, with our mother, with our wife. So if one of those systems is compromised, I get to be you on all of those systems. So we need to make passwords go away, but yet we need to make it easy for users to do the right thing. And that's where these security co keys come in place. Because now, rather than just something you know, the password that you type in, you need this physical device to have and put that into your, your computer. And without that device, I can't break into your account. I want to finish with one quick story. Because we went for drinks the other night. And somebody asked me, hey, you know, how, how can you explain all of that uh, with magic? And I said, that's, that's actually not a bad idea. So I grabbed a bag. And because we were at the bar, I grabbed a bottle, put the ball inside the bag, and said, hey, being born in the cloud first makes security problems go away. It disappeared. See? Just like now. The hard part is to bring it back. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Because I talked about transparency, if I wave my hand over the bag, the ball disappears. Again, the hard part, bring it back. <laughs> but remember, it comes about the user and to make it easy for users to do the right thing and do the secure thing. And that's really where the magic happens. Thank you very much.